Hey everyone, the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage here. I am bringing you another video on an industrial machine. I have managed to find myself yet a second industrial sewing machine. After nine years of working on domestics, <clears throat> home sewing machines, I have uh, recently had an interest in industrials. Now I had recently made a video um, uh, sharing more information with you all about my little marrow overlocker there. I say little, it's an industrial machine. And I wanted to give you uh, an idea of scale with machines. And by the way, I'm happy to report that I just found the other part of the uh, service receipt for the marrow overlocker. And it looks like it was 1999, uh, January 7th, 99, when the service was done. And that's a really cool piece of information because now I know it has been 20 years this year, actually this past January, 20 years since this machine had any service. And so that's a really cool thing to find out. Uh, you don't always get that information. So uh, the seller <clears throat> didn't know or didn't tell me, but it was in the paperwork. There's a little tray on this table. But I did want to talk to you about, of course, this new machine or this next machine. What are you looking at here? This is a Brother Lockstitch Industrial Sewing Machine, uh, model D like door, B like Bravo, 2-B like Bravo, 755-150. Uh, or instead of calling that out to you, I guess I could zoom in and actually show it to you. It's a little easier to see than the Marrow machine is. And uh, so I bought this machine uh, for several reasons. I have a client who's looking for an industrial and uh, not an overlocker, but an actual a lock st stitch machine. Now this machine that you're looking at was sold for industrial use. <clears throat> it is a straight stitch machine. And this machine is sort of a variation on an old Singer design. Singer had a lot of patents in industrial machines. A lot of people don't know that the Singer company had an entire division that only made industrial sewing machines uh, in addition to all the wonderful vintage home machines that we know. And over, year, over, the, over the years, the patents would expire and other companies, such as the Brother Company, uh, based in Japan, they of course would make some changes and sometimes they made some improvements and they would adopt some of the old expired patents and create their version of what is essentially an old Singer model. I'll have to look up and see exactly which one this one is based on. Now, uh, this machine, of course, like all industrials, doesn't have a motor attached to it. The motor, of course, is going to be in the table, which also came with the machine. And here, I just zoomed in. This is the table. I have another table. It's actually the same size as the one that the Marrow came in. And uh, this is the clutch motor that came with uh, <clears throat> the Brother machine. Now, this clutch motor is, is much younger than the, than the old uh, Tamper, Tamper brand that came with the Marrow machine. This, will, this motor has a date on its uh, plate along with a serial number, and it says 1998. So, uh, gosh, 98 is, <clears throat> you know, 21 years ago. Uh, this motor would have been almost brand new at the time that the Marrow was last serviced. So, you know, this is somewhat young compared to the other motor. And I may end up keeping this one for my client. I, I may ask the client if they want to convert over to a servo motor. And I'll talk more about servos in a different video. Servo motors are an alternative to clutch motors when you're dealing with industrial sewing machines. Now, one thing you'll see as I turn here, the controls for, uh, for this machine are here. They're mounted on the front of the industrial table, obviously on and off. There's, a, there's also a uh, outlet to plug in uh, a light fixture. And this table is actually, it looks very similar to the one that I have now on the Marrow, only it's a tad bit newer. Uh, although I don't know how much newer it is because it has that same sort of sort of turquoise green <coughs> laminate from I believe 
uh, the 40s or 50s. In fact, this table may be older than the Brother uh, sewing machine that I've got here. But I wanted to uh, talk about the Brother machine not only because it's the latest industrial or only the second industrial I've ever purchased, but I also wanted to uh, talk a little bit about scale because a lot of times, you know, when I made that video, I was talking about the difference between industrial machines and uh, domestics and, and how some people mistakenly call uh, industrial sewing, <coughs> excuse me, vintage home sewing machines industrial when they're not. One of the things I thought I would show you all is this is <clears throat> the top of the table that came with the Brother Industrial Machine. On the right, you'll see the bobbin winding device, which uh, accesses use of the, the machine's belt. And of course, the belt will connect to the, uh, to the hand wheel of the, of the Brother Machine, and then it connects down to the pulley of that clutch motor I just showed you. Now, uh, this... Um, this machine, of course, it came with a thread stand, and you see that there. But what I really wanted to sort of highlight here is there's a little well. And before I went and picked this machine up, I did some research, and I suggest you all do the same if you are looking at uh, an industrial sewing machine. Some sewing machines that were used uh, in an industrial setting would have holes where you would apply sewing machine oil uh, periodically. But those were largely used in tailor shops. And for industrial purposes, there are many exceptions to this, but as a rule, industrial sewing machines had to be able to be serviced quickly. And if you can imagine how much sewing would have been taking place first shift, second shift, you really didn't have time to stop and add a drop of sewing machine oil and all the oiling points. And this machine has, uh, as did the singer it was based on, it has an oil pan. An oil pan in some way, and it's very not unlike the oil pan that you might have in an automobile. And what's great about this is when I, when I got to pick this machine up, I knew it had one, but I had no idea if there was going to be oil in it and how I was going to ship this without spilling oil all over the place. Fortunately, there were a series of cushions, and I'll show those later because I'm going to do a different video on the Brother machine and its restoration, but there are foam cushions that sit here, and the oil pan literally sits down in the table. It literally is cradled. There, there are braces in the opening of this table. And you, this is the pan. You're looking right in it. There's a place here it says low and high. So there are two marks over here uh, that tell you when you've either got too little or too much oil. And so it's like a sump. Uh, the oil sit, and you can see there's trash in here. I've got thread and pins and buttons and who knows what all I've got to go through and uh, clean all this out and there's a gasket. And so when this oil pan rests, in, and down below you'll actually see the little, uh, that's the lever to, to, uh, so you can control your uh, presser, presser bar and, and get it to, to uh, you can lift your presser bar with the knee so you have your hands free. That's pretty, uh, pretty common, thank God, for industrial machines. So, uh, Anyway, the machine, when the machine is installed in the table, it rests down below the level of the oil and it actually wicks oil <coughs> up. Uh, and, and there's actually a, a clear tube underneath the Brother machine and it will actually uh, keep uh, use of lubrication. Keep, let's try that again. It will, it will have lubrication in the machine constantly because it has access to a pretty substantial amount of oil. No little bottle is going to cut this. I think it might even hold a half a quart. I don't know. But I had not seen this before, and I was really happy to see that I was able to remove this pretty simply. Um, the, the pieces that were holding it in were, were foam. They, I think they had been nailed, but they were very easy for me to remove, and I was able to take the machine out. And to move this table with the clutch motor, it was so heavy there was no way I was going to try to move it with the machine. And as it turned out, the machine was resting 
here on top uh, in its place in the table and there are two little brackets uh, they're like hinges and they they act as sort of a stop to keep the you know if you tilt the machine back it doesn't go rolling over and flying out and that's pretty remarkable and if I push on the uh, you can see the I don't know if you guys see this you see the little uh, post rising as I push on the uh, on the presser bar lift it's a knee lift for the presser bar it's kinda cool uh, but again this is a remarkably different than is uh, any than are any of the domestic machines that I've ever worked on and let me tell you how heavy this machine is my god it, it is like lifting a little outboard boat motor I did not weigh this machine but I'm willing to bet it has to weigh a good 60 65 pounds um, it is a beast and so I, by removing the, the machine from the table, then uh, we were able to get the table loaded up and get it here to my place. Uh, and that was really the only way I, I, I thought would be practical to do this. So I want to show you guys something. One of the strongest, and I believe the strongest, home vintage sewing machine ever built is the Singer 15 class. It was called the Farmer's Machine for a reason. And now I want you to see it in contrast to the Brother Machine. And I don't know if this really reads well because I've got the Singer in front of the Brother, but I am here to tell you that, you know, this, this is, uh, the Brother is easily three times as heavy as the Singer in just in terms of sheer weight. And in terms of size, it, it, really, it really is dwarfed by the industrial sewing machine. There we go, guys. I wanted to, I've got these two machines side by side because that really, uh, I wanted to give you a better sense of scale of what we're dealing with here. Again, that Singer 15, that's an old treadle, uh, one of the beefiest home sewing machines ever made. And uh, I mean, look at the difference, right? And of course, the Singer Industrials would have been just as uh, different in terms of being heavier and larger. And of course, when it comes to power, <clears throat> the, one of the reasons that the industrials had to be larger wasn't just because they needed a, a, a broader, a broader, a wider harp space uh, compared to something like the Singer 15 class, but <clears throat> the reason you had to have a heavier duty machine, heavier chassis, heavier drivetrain is because these machines were designed to sew very fast. In fact, it was part of the, the sewing speed was part of what helped help these machines use that uh, that oil pan lubrication. And it's just phenomenal to think about you know how much these machines worked. The Brother Company still produces a model very similar to this. <clears throat> uh, I believe they're made in China now, but the ones made in Japan are more coveted by people who want who want used industrial machines. Uh, at least that's my understanding. It, it, the ones from China may be fine. I don't know. Uh, I can't really say for sure. But I just wanted you to see the scale and, and have some idea of, you know, when someone says, you know, a home machine is industrial. No, it's not. <laughs> not just the physical size, but underneath with the drive shafts, everything is heavier gauged. And... Um, uh, when I start doing a, <clears throat> I'm going to do a video on the Brother itself, and when I do, I'll talk more about how picking out an industrial machine is tough. Uh, my client wants a straight stitch industrial machine. They're going to do, be doing things like sewing bags and lots of webbing, thick, heavy fabrics, which they could do. You could actually do that with the Singer 15, the old, the old iron sides there, but they want to be able to sew a little faster. And um, anyway, this is a machine that I have found for them. I went scouting, found it. I'm going to restore the machine, uh, go, do a full overhaul of the Brother, and then get it ready for them. Uh, and then they will be getting it from me at some point. So and when I do that, and when I show you guys the Brother up close as it's been restored, I'll talk more about why picking an industrial machine is really tough because you really have to know what you want and, and what you want to do with it, even more so than the home machines, because 
Industrial sewing machines are very specialized. They typically do one thing and that's what they do. Whereas you've heard me talk about home domestic machines and how, uh, how incredibly flexible they are. They could sew all sorts of things and they had to. Most families would only have one sewing machine, whereas a factory that did garment making and, and you know, they had all kinds of different machines for different functions. Uh, but anyway, there you have it. You're looking at my second industrial sewing machine purchase. But the brother is, uh, again, that's one I'm overhauling for someone. I don't have any plans right now to keep that machine. Uh, for the straight stitch sewing that I plan on doing, uh, I'm not working with heavy fabrics myself. And so I'll probably stick to with one of my home you know, domestic machines, whatever I have on hand. And, uh, but I'm going to hold on to the, to the little marrow and, uh, just to show you that small things come in, uh, good packages, good things come in small packages because the marrow is, is an even smaller, uh, machine than the old, uh, Singer. And yet it's, uh, it's an industrial machine. Of course, it's, it's attached to an industrial motor. Anyway, just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, if you have, a uh, straight stitch industrial machine. It doesn't have to be a brother. It could be a singer. It could be any brand. Let me know. Uh, tell me about it. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you have any suggestions or advice, uh, a number of people come to my channel looking for advice and I'm happy to share what I know. But, you know, sometimes the, the teacher is the student and now I'm needing to learn. I'm going to have you guys watch me as I go through and learn. Uh, diving into something that is kind of outside of my normal realm, which is industrial sewing machine restoration. I think some of the things are going to be quite similar to home machines, and then some, uh, some of the things are going to be different. And it's the part that's different that I hope to learn from. So thank you again so much for subscribing to my channel, and, or if you haven't, feel free to, and share your comments below, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.